fellas and ladies, it's your boy. Well, you already know. You already know who it is. Hope you guys are doing well over here in the UK. It feels as though it's minus two. It's cold as hell. They're predicting snow in the next few days. It's getting ridiculous. Now, a lot of you people in the US are probably saying that this is typical UK weather, and it is cold out here, but it's not typical. This is cold, I mean, this is ice cold. I'm really not a fan. Your boy came back with a bang with the Tenant Review. Have you watched the Tenant Review? 4K Blu-ray, oh my. Shane from Spirit Change, his review's up in a couple of days. Um, what's happening apparently is, uh, when you get a review copy from Warner, with this title specifically, there's an embargo for the 11th. You can't review it until the 11th. Luckily, your boy knows a boy who knows a boy who sells 4K Blu-rays, US 4K Blu-rays, and I get them pretty early. You know what that means? No review copies. You know what that means? No embargoes. It's brass tax, baby. Let's talk Lord of the Rings. I've had the trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy extended editions for around three weeks, I want to say. I've had them a while. Uh, and just haven't had a chance to watch them. I didn't want to just skim through them and give you a half-baked review. I wanted to sit down and watch them properly because it's been a while since I've seen these. And I thought it would be fun. So the problem really was finding time, setting aside 12, 13 hours to watch these. Luckily, my girl's never seen Lord of the Rings. So, you know, we sat there, watched them together. Extended edition. Yeah, it was epic. Now I'm going to review these slightly differently, I'm going to do it all collectively as one and give you a final score at the end. I'm going to talk about the audio and I'm going to talk about the discs and how I feel about them. Now before I do, I want to say, firstly, gone are the days where I could just watch a movie, sit back and enjoy it. You know, ever since I started reviewing 4K discs, I approach them very analytically, right? So. Someone will watch them with me and just enjoy them for what they are. And I do too, but I'm also analyzing the PQ for you guys, because you got to. But it's the way the game is played, I guess. You know, if you're going to review stuff, you're going to have to look at things objectively. Now, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy, so I had to take my bias out the window and just look at it for what it was. Now, I know Shane from Spirit Change has got a lot of backlash because he had some very polarizing views on this trilogy. He said it looked decent, he just didn't think it was as groundbreaking and as amazing as everyone else thought it was. Even though I am analytical, I'm not going to start looking for problems that aren't there. If a movie's good, I'm going to enjoy it, but it's when things start to stand out. Now here's the problem. See, I'm in a bit of a quandary here, because I've watched the movies, and here's the problem. Director's intent versus consumer expectation. Now Shane and I have come under fire before. Do you remember our Last Jedi reviews? We got killed for that. And then what happened? A lot of people got them and then they ended up agreeing with us. That was director's intent. The director intended it to look that way. But I thought The Last Jedi looked like trash. I also thought that Arrival looked more or less the same as the 1080p Blu-ray. That's also director's intent. Most HDR 4K Blu-ray discs are director's intent. But some of them don't meet my expectation and some of them don't meet yours. It is what it is. I have an expectation. I have a level of where I want Lord of the Rings to be. And to be honest, I think most of you guys do too. Now, there's a lot of people with a lot of strong opinions in the AV forums. Right? And here's the thing. If everything's director's intent, why even review things? Because we all have expectations, damn it. So that's what we're doing. We're measuring it against my expectations of how I want it to look and how it actually looks. It may exceed it, it may fall short, but we're gonna do it. Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, extended edition. Let's begin. The audio is practically referenced throughout all three movies. Earth-shaking Atmos atmosphere absolutely reference the bass is right the sound stage is wide and open great overheads very detailed sound detailed dialogue it brings me back to the theater with how good this is it is absolutely spectacular in the audio department yeah it's demo worthy 
audio. 100%. They've really done their thing with the Atmos. Every single battle, the battle in the two towers, you can hear every little movement, every little shifting of armor. You can hear the armor clinking together. The weapons, everything is just so detailed. You feel like you're there, extremely immersive. The barrel scene, water all around you. You're feeling like you're getting splashed in the face. This could be an entirely different topic right here. But you know what I mean. The music's enveloping, brings all the emotions back. It's been such a long time since I've watched this. And just the audio was just phenomenal. I mean, I've got the the LG soundbar Atmos, right? I don't even have a full Atmos setup, but I've got the rears, overheads, every, I've got what I need. And it sounded amazing. So I can only imagine how, how, how good this will sound on a full, full Atmos setup sounded spectacular rumbling bass and what have you and i'm sure most of you have these discs already so you know what i'm talking about now if you told your girl to sit on the woofer and see what happens she's not coming back you've lost her to the base reference quality atmos so we're done with the audio let's talk visuals and i'm talking all three as a whole collectively and i'm gonna be honest and give you my opinion my personal opinion okay it is inconsistent now don't get me wrong, I 100% uh, appreciate and understand what Peter Jackson was trying to do to these movies. Okay, but I feel as though they're overly processed. It'll vary from reference quality, like a perfect 10, to Madame Tussauds. And this will all happen in the same scene. You got Gandalf talking to Frodo and he looks absolutely impeccable. Raise the sharp, see all the wrinkles, looks like real life, looks like Gandalf was popping out of your screen. Then he'll turn to the right, talk to someone else and all of a sudden he looks like he's made of plastic. I don't get it. And, and don't get me wrong, Overall, throughout the trilogy, it is a very clean image, perhaps too clean in parts is my point. There are so many jaw-dropping scenes in this trilogy that it is a must-have. It looks absolutely stunning. And even with some of the issues that I've mentioned, it absolutely destroys the 1080p discs. It is by far the best way to watch them. And like I said, because most of it looks so sharp and so detailed, so amazing compared to the 1080p Blu-ray, the DNR sometimes sticks out like a sore thumb. The DNR may not even be that bad, but because the rest of it looks so good, it stands out and it's noticeable. It almost has like a dreamy-like look in part. Apart from the DNR issues, the clothing, the scenery, the textures, the sky, everything's got that 4K age to it. You're not going to be disappointed. Peter Jackson also stated that when bringing uh, this trilogy to 4K, he didn't expect the visuals to take a hit like they have. And they have. <laughs> Our boy Smeagol's taken a hit. I ain't going to lie to you. He's taken a hit. He looks softer. He looks like a visual effect. Okay, he looks fantastic on 1080p Blu-ray and, you know, even in the theatres, but he's taken a hit. Is it really bad? No, but you'll notice it. I mean, what can you do? It is what it is. That's what happens when things get that 4K treatment. But there are a lot of special effects in this movie and, you know, they vary from very good to passable. I still thought Smeagol was somewhat passable. And my girl was watching him with me and I'm telling you, she didn't notice anything I noticed. She thought it looked absolutely stunning. So there you have it on the visual side. Let's talk about the HDR baby, the Dolby Vision baby. And I'm gonna be honest, I love the color grading on this movie. I really do, it's such a step up. Like everything is so vibrant and, and just breathes new life into these movies. The fire looks amazing. The armors have a new sheen to them that just weren't present on the 1080p. Skin tones are more natural and saturated, more nuance in clothing. I noticed colors in clothing that I never noticed before. I had to go back to the 1080p Blu-ray and say, yep, there is a clear difference here. Contrast is improved. The Shire looking fantastic with that lovely green makes me want to go down there and smoke the finest weed with the boys. I ain't gonna lie to you. That third act in the two towers looked absolutely amazing. I'm talking panty dropping. Panties did get dropped that night, I ain't gonna lie to you. Doing that scene? God damn. Great blacks, dark, inky, and great detail. I mean, you're gonna notice so many things throughout this trilogy that you just didn't see on the 1080p. And I'm watching this on an OLED. And there have been plenty of times through, throughout this trilogy where I've had to squint my eyes because it's just too damn bright sometimes. 
Vision. So there, we, there it is, people. Dolby Vision does an amazing job, and it's a fantastic-looking transfer with some issues. I may have forgotten to mention that there's also some scenes where it looks overly sharpened as well. I had to check whether I had the sharpness on on my TV. Sometimes it looks overly sharp, and sometimes it looks overly soft with a DNR. That's what it is. This is a stellar trilogy. But it's let down by issues, in my opinion, that it shouldn't have. So I'm going to give the audio a 9.5 because the audio is that good. And I'm going to give the uh, visuals a 7.9. You know, it, this could have easily been a 9.5. This could have easily got the seal of approval for me. But there's so many little, little issues it has in these transfers that it really shouldn't. But maybe Peter Jackson, maybe this is the best job he could do with the source material. I don't know. But what I do know is when you pick these up and you watch them, you're going to have a fantastic time. A fantastic time because, like I said before, these are the best ways to watch these movies. Absolutely fantastic. Let down by a few irritations for me personally. But I still think you should pick these up. And when they look good, they look phenomenal. And there you have it, people. Subscribe if you haven't already. 4K Rockstar. You already know.